Welcome to the second episode of Suplex Society. I'm EC, or CE, I'm sorry. How do you get your own name wrong? <laughs> I get it when Chesco gets it, your name wrong, but how do you get your own name wrong? I watched the video earlier. Yeah. And Chesco, like, you can tell, <laughs> you can tell, like, there's several times he says EC. Oh, so yeah. it's got me saying. Uh, okay. So you just, you're blaming it on yes. good homework. Yes. Okay. So, CE. I'm CE. This is my co-host, Luis. And there's a lot that has happened in the last four days in the WWE. So, just to cap it off, we have had... The SmackDown in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Oh, forgot about that. SmackDown, Smackdown in Cleveland. SummerSlam. SummerSlam in Cleveland. And then Raw, Raw. in Baltimore, Maryland. Has NXT happened at all? Today. Okay, okay. NXT is every Tuesday. But that's almost, almost almost kind of separate from the so NXT general WWE storyline, right? NXT is developmental. Gosh, gotcha. So basically, uh, that's where they create their homegrown stuff. Makes sense. And we had kind of touched on that a little bit. Kind of like OVW. Right. So let's just dig right in. Okay. Know? So what happened? Where are we going to start? SmackDown, SummerSlam? We're starting with SmackDown. Okay. You got to go in order. So still kind of a little bit of building up into SummerSlam. Yes. Okay. Tell me more about that. So the show opens up with Cody Rhodes, and he's like, oh, what do you go guys want to talk about? Same thing he always does. Okay. And he's like, better yet, who do you want to talk to? Okay. And then that brings out the confrontation with Solo Sokoa. Okay, but they're already, at this they point, they have already... a match at SummerSlam. Right, okay. So basically, they're talking, and Solo says, you be a weak tribal chief that was Roman Reigns. Solo said that. You Solo said that. that. That Roman Reigns is a weak one. Yes, because he lost That's at WrestleMania. That's very interesting. Okay. And he's like... But he was champion for like a thousand plus yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Three years, four yeah. years. Yeah, whatever it was. And then... They start talking about bloodline rules and he Solo okay. was like, well, you keep talking about it. And he was like, let's do it. So, the championship match at SummerSlam becomes Bloodline, bloodline rules. rules. What are Bloodline Rules? Because I remember that Bloodline was... Rules, Bloodline can get involved. That's basically ah, okay, 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 okay. Just like WrestleMania. Yeah. Gotcha. It's the gimmick. So bloodline match. Rules is pretty much Bloodline gets everybody there and you can't have anybody. There. And Cody ends it by saying, since the Tribal Chief's not here, I will settle for the wannabe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comeback. And that's how that segment ended. Okay. I mean, it it was a pretty much pretty good, like exclamation point setting up the match for SummerSlam. Gotcha. Um, also setting up the uh, the tag team match later on in the night, where the Bloodline was facing uh, DIY for the World Tag. Who's DIY? Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Okay, I, I haven't heard they of them. They were NXT for a while. Uh, the Gargano name sounds familiar from NXT. They've but... had some really good matches yeah. against each other. Okay. Kind of cool. like Cammy and, or Kevin Owens and... Uh, and Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn. They've had some outstanding Yeah, matches. they're like OG buddies from like way, way yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. So then we go into Andrade. Andrade is Charlotte Flair's husband. He's back? I thought he was went to a different promotion. He went to AEW. Okay, that's what I thought. He came back recently. How recent? Royal Rumble recent. Oh, fairly recent. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then uh, they're, they kind of been introducing him. He got drafted to SmackDown. And then Carmelo Hayes, NXT guy, just got to the main roster and literally after WrestleMania. Okay. Is um, Carmelo Hayes... Um, Melo, Melo, uh, Melo can't miss or something like that. Is, 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 uh, it it, it kind of reminds me of Michael B. Jordan. Is he boyfriends with, with one of the Divas or Remo wrestlers? I don't know. I don't know anything about... <laughs> Carmelo Hayes? Okay, um, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe Personal it's... lives. I don't know. Gotcha. So, they've had match, a match a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They've had some really good matches. Carmelo really? Hayes is an up-and-comer. Andrade has a chip on his shoulder because he left AEW, or he left WWE, went to AEW, and then he came back. And now he's looking to have some really, and he's he's had some good matches. That match ended with he's, a roll up. He's a good technical wrestler, yeah. right? Yeah, Lucha Libre. Yeah, 
yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that happened, and then Santos Escobar faced Apollo Cruz. Santos. Apollo Cruz is still in WWE. Yes. I would have figured he'd be one of the ones to get let go. No. And... They they they're kind of finding ways to reinvent him. Gotcha. He's with Baron Corbin now. Baron Corbin? I've never I haven't heard of him in a long time. He's still there. Gotcha. He went so Baron Corbin went. He he ha, he never got released. He mm. they've just reinvented and changed his name. He's been repackaged. What's his name now? He's Baron still, still Baron Corbin. He Before be, he, he was, was Happy like, Corbin. He was like King of the Ring Corbin. He won. He, yeah, he won the King yeah. of the Ring. He had a dog food match. Dog food match with Roman. Really shitty booking. Gotch. <laughs> it under like... under under he who must not be named. Mm. Voldemort. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, he wins by. Out, Santos wins by outside interference because Santos wants to destroy him. And Baron Corbin. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, Outside interference from Legado del Fantasma. Sounds like a Lucha Libre guy. Uh, it's a Lucha Libre group. Oh, it's a group. Another <laughs> stable. Why is there so many stables in the new WWE? It's got hum- Humberto Carrillo. Uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. And there's a female. Okay. So that happened. That was, it was, I gave it a C. Okay. If we're talking, if you want to rate the match, it's a C. Because, I mean... Let's rate it. It's a C. Yeah. So then, Logan Paul comes back to Cleveland. Logan This is, this is before his, SummerSlam. Yes. His okay. hometown okay. of Cleveland on SmackDown. So there's homecoming right now. Yeah. How is he taken into the, the, he, the city? Is he taken with open arms or is he... He, he... People hate him. A lot of people think he doesn't belong in the WWE. He's the... Kind of like Miss was at the beginning, huh? He's the YouTube star that came in and just yeah, learned yeah. wrestling, and he's an outsider. That's usually how they take any any. Miss outsider. was MTV. Well, Miss was in life for a very very long time. No, yeah, Miss was MTV. He was doing uh, the Diva Search contest there for a while. I remember that early and then he days. He did tough enough, and yeah. then he was upset because he didn't get tough enough, and then he ended up getting a contract anyways. His charisma. Yeah. Uh, he kicked, got kicked out of the locker room. So Logan Paul did a dick move on Saturday, really? on Friday. What do you do? He unveiled a championship banner in a in a town that hasn't had a championship in ah. any sport in a long time. I like that though. <laughs> you know what? I I hate on him, but it, I, you gotta you gotta respect creativity. Logan Paul, like I said, he's an outsider, but once he revealed. He's, he's a good heel. Yes. He's Once good... he revealed this banner, he was basically shoving it in everybody's face. That, right. Oh, I'm the United States champion and this and that and the other. I'm a I'm a champion because Cleveland doesn't have any champions kind of thing. <laughs> it's classic heel move. Right. And when he unveiled the banner, it was painted over with yeah for LA Knight. Uh, so LA Knight got into it. LA Knight comes out. He was like, I'm sorry about your banner. I'll go back and find you one. So he's gone back and he runs into Pretty Deadly. Who's that? Tag team. I think they're gay. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I'm not against anybody who's no, gay. just come. I think. But anyways, uh, he was like, hey, do you have a banner for Logan Paul? And they're like, no. So he goes and he finds his prime truck. Now, Logan Paul has his prime right. drink. And it's being he has a deal with wwe for advertising so. I, I i'm pretty sure he has it with wwe or pre- ko i think he's got it with tko as yeah well. tko yeah, yeah. because so it's, it's advertised in ufc wwe's well. been putting logos in their pay-per-view rings like wheatley vodka oh uh, okay. uh, kind of like the ufc does the prime <laughs> bottle is in the middle of the right, canvas right and wing stop was in the corner really yeah, it's kind of weird. Hey, good for them. <laughs> uh, it's funny because we've been eating wing stuff yeah. every time. It must be working, right? So Knight goes out. He goes into the back. He's looking for this banner, and he finds the prime truck. He was like, I'm going to hold this collateral until I win the United States Championship tomorrow. Just make sure truck. that you actually give it over. <laughs> I like that. Stole his truck. So that 
It was a good segment. Uh, there's a lot of animosity. Logan Paul has already pinned Logan, or Logan Paul has already been pinned by LA Knight before. Was this a a, a good pin, or was it, like it was assisted pin. by somebody no. else? Okay, so it was. It was a, it was a it was legitimate a legitimate win. I think it was a tag team match. Ah, okay, so it kind of takes a little bit away from that, know. but still that. He still pinned him. That's why he gets the shot at the title. I always saw tag team matches as just a little bit less than the independent one. <laughs> They're one on one matches. Well, it's a good way. It's a good way to build storylines to me, but it's, it's a not, way to build momentum. He goes into yeah, a it, match. right, and then you could be like, "Oh, I pinned you in that." That's got that's yeah. one more thing you could say about him that you couldn't say before, right? Mind control too, in my opinion. Right, mind games. Gotcha. Yeah. So then, good promo, good. You know, you're you're marching towards SummerSlam. You're you're getting ready for your big U.S. title match. Logan Paul's never won, or not Logan Paul. L.A. Knight has never won a WWE championship at all. At all, no so chance. How long has he been in WWE? I mean, he was with Maxim Mel Models. I don't know anything about him. I don't really care for him. I didn't really care for the stick. I've never uh, heard of him. <laughs> Maxine Dupree was a part of it as well. God, why is that name She's so familiar? With she was with Chad Gable, Otis. <sighs> it sounds familiar. Anyways. I- Go ahead. Not important because their fucking booking sucked. <laughs> uh, okay. So Are we getting to SummerSlam? That's all I really care about, right? There's still two more things oh, to talk okay. about. On SmackDown. This better be good. Jay Cargo and Bianca Belair had their rematch for the World Women's Tag Team Championship. Jay Cargo is a girl. Uh, Jade Cargo and Bianca Belair. Jade. Jade is a girl. Ah, okay. Jade. Jade. Jade, Jade Cargo. Jade Cargo. And Bianca Belair, the EST. They got a rematch against Alba Fire and Isla Dunn okay. for the Women's Tag Team Championship. I thought Bianca Belair was the... They lost. I, I, thought, I thought she herself was the Women's... No. She, wasn't she like SummerSlam? She was Women? eventually. Last year. Not SummerSlam, the Last year. WrestleMania. She lost it at to WrestleMania. Who? No, she didn't lose it at WrestleMania. She lost it. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> now I'm sad. So, they 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 win by disqualification. They but don't win the titles. Jade and, uh, and, Bianca Belair. and Bianca win by disqualification. Because it's a qual- disqualification, no title. They don't change. win the title because Blair Davenport comes in and then after the match, they just beat them up. Mm. And then... Minor note, Tiffany Stratton got a new pink briefcase because Bailey broke it last week. I'm guessing that's a Money in the Bank briefcase? Briefcase, yes. Gotcha. She won in Toronto, which I've always wanted to go to Toronto. It'd be cool to go to Toronto <laughs> and watch like a wrestle, uh, wrestling exactly. match. Yeah. Main event time. It was supposed to be Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa versus DIY for the World Tag Team Championships. Okay. But... Tungalo got injured. He had an eye patch, and they replaced him with Jacob Fatu. The, the new guy, the one that was supposed to be like the werewolf? The werewolf. The werewolf. Okay. Jacob Fatu, there's a lot of uh, highlights from MLW. I don't know what MLW stands for. Is that a promotion? Yeah. Gotcha. I think it's like Major League Wrestling or something. Oh. Uh, but it was a really good match. There's a lot of. Jacob Fatu was the strongest one in the match. I mean, either team could have taken it. You know who Jacob for two? I've seen I've seen a couple of highlights from him. You know who he reminds me of? I forgot what his name was, but he was the black wrestler who came into WWE from NXT. Big dude, tall, fat, it was really really popular in the indies, but moved like a lightweight. Do you know who I'm talking about? Does that strike any bills? Did he come to the main roster? Yeah, he was in, in, in WWE. Main roster? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's SmackDown or Raw. You know how many black dudes there? No, but he was maybe not. Was the, he good? Not, yeah, oh, very good. Not the size of Mark Henry, but. Kurt, um, that sounds familiar. He went to AEW. What, what's I, his name? I think it's. 
He went to AEW. He was the NXT champion for a while. I think so. And he was a big dude. What is his name? Because I think it's like Keith Lee. Keith Lee. Keith Lee. Keith Lee. That's who he reminds me of. Just a little bit uh, uh, more in shape. He's lighter weight, too. Yeah, a little bit more in shape. But he he has that Samoan kind of look to it. But he has the aerials that Keith Lee was kind of doing. He Even can, more now. He can flip. He can do all kinds of things. I, it, it's very impressive. So the match went back and forth. And basically, outside interference from uh, Tongaloa. And Tomalo- Tongaloa and uh, Tomo- no. Solo Sokoa, I'm sorry. So who was in the match? It was Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga. Tama Tonga. And the, and the, Tama Tonga and Tongaloa. I, I'm going to confuse those already. <laughs> exactly. So I don't, I don't blame you. So Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu were in a uh, tag, team match tag team match with... DIY, DIY, Johnny Gargano, Johnny, right. Gargano, Johnny right. Wrestling, and Tommaso Ciampa. And they won, I'm guessing. They Bloodline. Being the Bloodline, right? Took the titles. Because of interference by um, the Bloodline. Tangaloa and Solo Sikoa. Okay. So now we're going to SummerSlam, right? It was a good, it was good SmackDown. What would, you, what would you rate it? What would you rate the whole SmackDown show overall? I'd say a B plus. B plus? Okay, what was it missing? I mean, Santos. Esc- I don't. I don't. I like that he's a lucha libre, like bringing back the Latino. You know, right? Because if at one time he was a part of the LWO, and don't then he betrayed. LWO was a team. It was a WCW thing. Ah, okay. okay. Before it became a WWE thing, they just brought it back like this year or last year. Okay, pay pay homage to that. Yes. Um. I can't really say what it was missing. It was more opinion-based, um, kind of just gut feeling. that It, it could have had more, maybe more. I mean, for a, for a final show before a big pay-per-view, your big four, yeah. that wasn't enough to, like, say, hey, tomorrow SummerSlam, this is what's happening. But they did make you think that, hey, Solo Soko has got a shot. Because he's got back up on the... Won the tag titles, and he said the the undisputed championship was coming back with him as well. Back kind to the bloodline, build, build yeah. the championships. So SummerSlam, I actually started watching SummerSlam here because I was still here. Oh, okay, because <laughs> we were doing the UFC Fight Night. It right, kinda went farther than I wanted it to. The Fight Night. Yeah, <laughs> you're more interested in what's really important here. Yeah, I was. It's not that the person that was supposed to be here wasn't here. We're not going to name names, <laughs> but we all know who He's it is. He's the one that planned it. Right. You know. So we started off with, I mean, Jelly Roll did the Star Spangled Banner and he sang a song. And then we went into the event, which was the Women's World Championship between Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. Oh, I opened, saw. I saw a lot of that. It opened the show. What a way to open the show. Yeah. Like. Usually, the opening match is kind of the undercard when matches. When you're booking a WWE pay per view, you always want your first match and your main event to be the stars of the show. Okay. And I, the reason why I say that is your opening match keeps the fans into it throughout the whole match, throughout okay. the whole pay per view. The logic is there. Basing it off of how I've seen other pay per views, usually the opening match is. Not as high on the important scale, yeah, as other matches. But this all, one, all delivered. the matches on SummerSlam, in my opinion, were been, were important. I that's what I could say. It looks like it, it was it, a big. It was a big. Was one of the big four. Was there any title not on the line? No, I don't think so. I think every title was on the line at this Except show. Except for the, so the World Tag Team Championships were on the line. The night before. On SmackDown. On SmackDown. So that's probably they, the only one. And then uh, Judgment Day's t- uh, tag titles wasn't on the line. Those are the only two. Is titles. there two tag titles? Yes. Well, but it, that's what I thought. Okay, so Lev Morgan, Rhea Ripley. Mommy. So Rhea Ripley comes out with Dominic, Dominic at her side. So the, <laughs> Little does she know. 
everything that happened here, I called it. You did. It, you it did was, say most of this. It was predictable. Everything that I, that happened was predictable. No, if if I can preface this by saying I have heard multiple people saying, and there was even like a, a little meme that was talking about how predictable SummerSlam was. Yeah, yeah. And people were upset about that. But then the the meme was Triple H says, "Listen to the people." So he listens to the people, gives them what they want. Yeah. And now the people are saying, you give us what you want, it's too predictable. <laughs> yes. So how 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 do you but the way they that told out? the way they told the story throughout the night in each match was it was amazing. very engaging. I didn't watch SummerSlam, but I couldn't wait to hear about it. So Dom, Dom. comes out with Rhea Ripley. Rip, okay. Rhea Ripley's challenger, Liv Morgan's champion. Like I said in the last show, uh Rhea injured Liv to begin with. Liv came back, injured Rhea, and then won the championship and started doing all the things with the Judgment Day. Okay. So this match starts out. Uh, Rhea and Liv playing cat and mouse. Liv's running inside the ring. She's trying to catch her. Typical. Finally catches her. They do some fighting. And then Rhea dislocates her shoulder. I saw that. Then she fucking, to put it back in place, she hits... She just rams this fucking shoulder. You can tell. It looked like the shoulder was actually dislocated. And that's what I was going to say. It's one thing for you to do like kayfabe and say like, oh, it's dislocated. Because I can fake a dislocated shoulder. But it looked like it was dislocated. Yes. It, they zoomed into it. And it looked like it was dislocated. So she slams she slams her shoulder into the announce table. Yeah. And it relocates. What a beast. Then Liv gets scared. And Rhea goes to grab a chair, and Dom grabs the chair. He was like, hey, you can't win the title if you hit her with the chair. That's when I was like, oh, she's going to win the championship. You know, I was kind of on the fence about... At she, that, she being Rhea Ripley. Yes. So they played it off like Dominic was protecting her. At that moment, I thought Rhea's going to win the championship back. Okay. But then uh, Dom gets hit by Liv, and he falls off the apron, mm -hmm. and... Rhea gets hit by Oblivion. Liv Morgan's finisher. She oh, pins okay. her. Rhea kicks out. Something happens. And somehow the chair gets put back into the ring, I think. Mm. And then uh, Dom has the referee. And Liv hits Oblivion so on the chair. He was distracting the referee. Yes. I didn't see that part. He was distracting the referee. Liv hits Oblivion on the chair. And then she retains. And then they kiss after the match. I saw that. I saw. That. Now, let. There's a couple of questions I want to ask you. I don't think we need to talk more about the match because I think the match was fantastic. The, the little bit, good. the little bits that I did see, which was a bunch of highlights. It looked like that was the whole match. Was a bunch of highlights. Yeah. Good. So I don't think we need to talk more about the match. Let's talk about a couple of things that have to do with the match and with the sword. One, who would you choose? Mommy or Liv Morgan? Ooh, that's Person. hard. That's hard. A lot of people like like dark devilish. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And you're wearing purple right now, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What about you? No, 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 no. Don't turn around on me. <laughs> you go first. No, my wife will kill me. I have a clear decider. And my girlfriend, I love her. But Liv reminds me of Harley Quinn. I can see that. Uh... I'm gonna say live. Live. I it's a, it's a hard choice. It really is. Re regardless, like I can see why some would say one or some would say the other one, right? I I would prefer and call me weird, I'd prefer Rhea Ripley. You would take I'd prefer see, I don't Rhea know Ripley. if I could have a man a woman that's like <laughs> I mean mu more muscular than me. Maybe it would be the same amount of muscular because I don't think that I'm more muscular than her. You would have to, like, she would motivate you to, like... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'd be in the gym every day. Honey, I got this. I, I might be able to open that jar of pickles have whenever seen, she asks about it. Have you seen her fiancé? Or, actually, she's married now. Yeah. yeah he's Murphy. an AW, yeah. right? Yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. So... But you know you, you're on the you're in the same line of work, so you're right. doing all the yeah, of course. But that aside, right? Because is, does Liv Morgan have a boyfriend? 
don't know. That's Let's say she that. does. That aside, right? <laughs> this is all in full respect for both of them. It has exactly. nothing to do with objectifying them. It has everything to do with the respect that we have for these ladies, yeah. right? They can do a lot of things we can't. Oh, a lot of things. <laughs> I have to go with Rip. The, the security, I just wanted her to hold me. But I, also, I, I wanted her to hold me and be like, yes, ma'am, whatever you say, ma'am. I also like, see, I like Rhea's Australian accent. That's what yeah. gets me too. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know. But then on the other you have Liv Morgan. Like, I could see, I could see I left with her. <laughs> Some of the stuff she's been wearing lately, it's like, they're putting this on TV? <laughs> uh, maybe I just haven't noticed those things. So I haven't watched it yeah. like that. But We're talking like. I wouldn't be. Look, I mean, you could say the same thing about Rhea. I know. You could say exactly the same thing about Rhea. But she wears chokers and all kinds of. Yeah, yeah. She's in. You can tell she's into, like, metal, like. Music. Maybe, like, maybe it's because she scares me a little bit. Like, <laughs> I want to try a little of that. I would wonder what it would be like to be in a relationship with her. What was your other question? The other question was, going away from kayfabe, what do you think Dominic Mysterio's wife was saying after he saw that kiss? Do you think she's like, you know what? I understand this is your line of duty. You're like an actor, and this is for the storyline. This is so we can both get paid. I was initially, like, when... They were doing the the, the lead up to all of this, mm -hmm. where Liv would fall on Dom and he, she was straddling right, him. Right, right. I, I was like, that. if I did that, my wife would probably kill me. Even if you're <laughs> making money out of it, right? Even I, I, I get it because I think my wife would kill me too. So that's why I'm asking, what would you do? Oh, what what, what do you think his wife was saying? If you're making point? good money, because I mean they have to be right. I, I, but regardless, right? I think part of it has to do with I understand that this is. Your line of work. Your line of work is to be an actor yes. in front of a live audience. But that's just like movies. And that's what I'm saying. But even so, in some movies, partners don't understand, right? So it goes into... And that was a passionate kiss. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a passionate And she kiss. was surprised. Morgan, there was an element of surprise right there. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if that was scripted. I think I, it, I would have to think that it was, but I would I would be even happier if it wasn't. Yeah. Because it's an authentic reaction, right? Yeah. So, after the match and after they leave the ring, yeah. Dom, or not Dom, uh, Damian Priest enters their locker room. He's like, where the hell's Dom? I'm fucking pissed at him pretty yeah. much. He's like, I'm going to go find him. And I'm, uh, I'm, you know, he was really upset. Yeah. So, the next match, it goes right into the next match. Which is? Braun Breaker, Sami Zayn, Intercontinental Championship. It wasn't a squash. But Braun Breaker is your new Intercontinental Champion. Oh, good for him. Braun Breaker is related to Scott Steiner, Rick Steiner, right. the Steiner Brothers. Um, I mean, management's really happy with him. The way he he, he can move, yes, really fucking fast. Yes. The way that he did the he ran around the whole ring and then speared uh, Ludwig Kaiser on Raw one. What? I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, you need to go find that. Okay. I'll he can watch it. It, literally like five seconds and he's around the whole ring like taking out Ludwig Kaiser or, or I can't remember if it was Kaiser or Sheamus. It's one of the two. Yeah. But he moves so fast. It's not even funny. Who's comparable to him? From He from, reminds me like the early, like 2000 era. He reminds me he's faster than Brock Lesnar. But he's, but he's also smaller so that would make he's, sense. He's small. Yeah. I've seen some fast big guys. I've seen faster some really Lester? fast big guys that are faster than Brock Lesnar. Okay, okay. I mean, maybe I said corrected. So faster than Brock Lesnar. Uh, who would you compare him to? Brock Lesnar because he got the. Because that's what I was going to say. Brock Lesnar esque, but Braun Strowman. Really, but Braun Strowman, obviously, he's like, he's he's slimmer. Braun Breaker slimmer. Yeah, but Bra Braun. St See, I never saw Braun Strowman as a very but he agile can't guy. And that's, he can't like, that's where I'm going for Because he has... A lot of your big guys can't really move that fast. But Braun Breaker can. He looks like he has very good technical skills. The, he's got a devastating spear. It looks better than Roman's to me. Okay. How much of that do you think is, is an actual... Because to have a devastating spear, it has to be devastating in real life. Yeah. So you, they feel everything to a point. I, I agree, but 
it, it he goes, makes it look so legit. And I think that's where I'm going. Though. How much of it do you think is legitimate spear versus just the great setup? Or do you think well, it's just a perfect combination of both? You have to have chemistry with the person you're in the ring with, too. You can't have chemistry with everybody. So it, uh, part of it has Good to be Good wrestlers that. make chemistry with anybody they get in the ring with. As ring generals, so they say it. John Cena is one of them. Yeah. But John Cena can't really wrestle. Yeah, good point, good point. You know, I mean, you look at Bret Hart. I mean, he, yeah. but the he was very, he very had technical. with Shawn Michaels. Both of them were technical. Uh, Shawn Michaels was more of a high flyer. Okay. The way he, okay. Because him and Marty Jannetty came in and they started doing all the flips that, right. you, know, right. you know, not your stereotypical big guy like Vince wanted back in the 90s. Right. So, it was a devastating spear. That's all I got to say. It, it like, it made it look like Sammy it killed him. Broken hand. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Is Sammy okay?" Because I was here and I was just leaving, and I was like, "I gotta go." I was supposed to be gone like forty-five minutes ago, and yeah, Brown Breaker, your new Intercontinental Champion. He's he's impressed a lot of people, and that's why he's in the position that he's in. Good for him. He's Good only been him. in the WWE for two years. Including Look, your NXT. I, as long as they don't I feel like push him. I feel like they waited too long to put him. Really? Okay. On the main he should have been on the main roster last year. Okay. Look, what I'm afraid of is the whole Roman Reigns no, they uh, didn't, situation. They didn't shove him. And that's what I didn't want. As long as I don't push they him. They shoved like, Roman back in 2014. I, I remember that. And nobody wanted him because they could tell that they wanted him. They brought The Rock in mm -hmm. to try to save that. They brought. I remember that. It just didn't happen. Yeah. It, have, it didn't happen organically. And if it doesn't happen organically, it's not going to sell well with the with actual that, audience. We'll get to that later. Oh, okay. I'm listening. I'm ready. Next match, United States Championship. Logan Paul, LA Knight. LA Knight. Logan Paul drives in the truck. Logan Paul drives in or the... Or not Logan Paul. L.A. Knight. L.A. Okay. Comes out in the truck. He doesn't bring it out into the arena, but he drives up in it. Gotcha. And he was like... Because it's, it's color... It's blue, and it's got the right. little... You know, people put stuff for uh, advertisement, like Prime. Right. He was like, I can't see out of this damn thing anyway, so he takes it back to the back window, <laughs> and then he comes to the ring. And Logan Paul comes out with MGK. A lot of celebrities were there. MGK. I wonder why MGK out. And see they know each other, I guess. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, they started fighting before the match even started. It was like 10 to 15 minutes of wrestling before the match started. For the bell even rung. Outside the ring, Logan Paul hit a nice, like, somersault. I saw that. And... and Logan Paul can go. And that's what I was going to say. People can hate him all, uh, pan on him all he wants, but I think part of he's, the hating he, is the fact that he's so good. I, a lot of these people that wrestle, they don't, they do it as their first. Logan Paul has done, he was on YouTube. That's how. Right. He did, he did this. I used to watch yeah. him on YouTube. I remember that. He's, he's done. Maybe you know more than me. Uh, but I'm not Disney. <laughs> I, th I think he was a Disney actor. He was did the YouTube. He did boxing. He fought Mayweather. He uh, was that Logan? Yeah, he fought Logan. Logan fought, fought, fought Mayweather. He lost, but he fought him. I mean, how many people actually beat Mayweather? Absolutely <laughs> none. Uh, he reinvented himself after the whole situation. He has a podcaster. Well, yeah, he's got what is his. Uh... What's his podcast? Um, impulsive. Yeah. Impulsive. I, I've watched it. Yeah. You know, kind of. I, I watched a couple of different episodes because he has some interesting guests. I watched it more for the guests he's uh, has, he has had on than for him, him himself. I know he had John Cena. He talks to Triple H, John Cena, all that stuff. Yeah. So, he, he can go. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, a lot of these wrestlers that do it first, are like, we've been doing this for 15 years. And half of them don't get that good. Mm -hmm. So that's where the jealousy comes from. And, and I get it. I get it. People want what they don't have. Yeah. So exactly. it makes sense. So match starts outside. Uh, I mean, pretty much. 
he was going to use the brass knucks because that's how he's been winning his matches. Yeah. He was he got them from MGK, right? They were around MGK's neck. Yeah. He hit he actually hit Logan Paul, but it wasn't like a, you know, he goes for the knockout punch. Logan he didn't Paul do hit that. LA Knight. LA, okay. So, LA Knight BFT matches over a new United States champion. And the reason why I think they did that, there were some controversial tweets cuz this match was there was supposed to be a second match. Mm. There were some controversial tweets about something that happened with the Olympics. Between whom? Uh, I guess I guess it was a boxing match. So Logan Paul. Logan say- Paul. There was some. Con- he was. It has something to do with women in men's sports. Okay. Or men and women's sports. sports. Gotcha. And I think that's why they took the title off of Logan Paul so soon. Just to kind of save face a little bit. They didn't want him attached to the championship. Makes sense. That makes sense. It, you know, you, you have a title, you represent the company. Right. And if you're saying stuff about... Yeah, no, it may, that makes perfect sense. So, new U.S. champ with everybody saying L.A. Knight. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> how, do, how, do, how do people like L.A. Knight? I think I've asked this before, but the reason why I ask is LA I, I've Knight, seen like re- mixed reviews on L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight was DNA. Kind L.A. Knight like was... Henry? Yeah, L.A. Knight was TNA at one time. Okay. He actually wrestled Bobby Lashley. He did a lot of things. Uh, I don't know why they don't like L.A. Knight. He's charismatic, but Kevin Maybe. Nash calls him knockoff rock or knockoff Steve Austin. and mm. Kind of like, you know, they've been beefing on social media for a while. There's a WCW thing where he's like, look at the verb. And he was like, I... He said, I'm not an idiot. Look at the adjective. <laughs> so then we go into the women's championship match. So we go into the women's championship match, and it's Bailey versus Nia Jax. Nia Jax won. Did Nia Jax just come back? She won, Yeah. Okay. Royal Rumble. Gotcha. I, I, cause I, Nobody wanted Nia Jax back because they people were saying she was uh, not a safe worker. I remember that. She hurt a bunch of people, right? I don't know if it's true. The verdict's still out on that one. Okay. She won the King of the Ring, or Queen of the Ring, I'm sorry. And she, she being Nia Jax? Nia Jax won King of the Ring. What? Queen of, Queen the, of ring. the Ring. Shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm still getting used to this Queen of the Ring stuff. Uh, because it hasn't, you know, it has always been there. Which gave her the opportunity to face Bailey at SummerSlam. Bailey being the women's championship. Women's champion. Okay. So, is there a different name for that? If there's some Raw or, or no. just a was this SmackDown or Raw? One is the so the Raw title is the women's world champion. It looks like the world heavyweight championship, and then the it's the women's championship for SmackDown. Gotcha. That used to be Raw women's championship, SmackDown women's championship. I, 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 that's why I ask because I I, I don't know if there's a difference. So. This match, Bailey, I mean, smaller than Nia Jax, but she tried to get her off her feet. This bitch, literally, they were on the... So, she, you know how the ring looks? Right. They're at the turnbuckle, and she's standing on her, or Nia Jax, and then Bailey just fucking powerbombs her. Bailey powerbombs Bomb Nia, Nia Jax. Jax? How? I don't know how they... Was even, she on the ring? Yeah, she was standing on the second turn. That makes sense. But, I mean, there's like 150 pounds extra yeah, right you, there. You, you have to have a lot of not just a, a lot of strength to be able to pull that off. So, Bailey power bombs Nia Jax. There was a distraction because Tiffany Stratton, who won Money in the Bank, women's Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. came out was going to try to Seth Rollins kind of cash in yeah. like Drew McIntyre did at Money in the right. Bank, and. It failed because Bailey pushed her off and not Bailey withstood the annihilator three times. Mm. But she after the third time it was done. Okay. New women's champion for SmackDown. Being I Nijax. Yep, Nijax is new women's champion. I feel like that's so we had four title changes. Okay, four title changes. Yeah. All right, next fight. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. 
CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. I'm a little bit upset that I'm a. So they pay I'm homage, a big, to, big, big, to the 1997 special. Remember what I was talking yeah, about? Yeah, you did say you called it. They paid homage to it. It was the Undertaker versus Bret Hart. Shawn Michaels was special referee, 1997, mm-hmm. SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, Fast and Furious action. Seth didn't count countouts. Uh, but he was being biased towards both of them yes. for a little bit. And he didn't allow Drew, but he didn't allow Drew to use a chair. Oh. Uh, there was an anaconda device that was put on Drew McIntyre from CM Punk. He got the bracelet off his wrist, put it back on his wrist. Somehow this bracelet comes off. He notices that Seth Rollins, you know, Seth Rollins, referee. Safety reason. We're going to pick the the loose object up, and he puts it on his arm. Who is this? Seth Rollins. So Seth Rollins is not wearing the bracelet. Bracelet. CM Punk notices it. So he attacks Seth Rollins. CM Punk. Team Punk attacks Seth Rollins because he's wearing a bracelet, which it has his dog Rollins and was, his wife's name on it. I remember that, but it's a safety thing; could trip and fall or something. Of course, like. he was doing it for the bed, yes. betterment of the, of the actual match, right? So That's not how CM Punk saw it, did he? <laughs> so what happened was he 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 performs the GTS on Seth Rollins, okay. goes back, moves his attention back to Drew. Drew low blows him. Kicks him in the nuts. Mm. And then he does the Claymore. And that's how CM Punk lost the match. So he CM Punk screwed CM Punk. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. World title match is next. Damian Priest versus Gunther. Gunther. Finn Balor wishes Damian good luck. Uh, Gunther still showed the chest marks from fighting Finn Balor on Raw. Mm. Gunther and Damian Priest fucking just like chopped the fuck out of each other mm. so bad that at one point Gunther was bleeding from his chest from his chest and he takes he wipes it and then he wipes it all over his face I feel like that's a rod of passage like to to win the championship you have to go to oh, war oh yeah so Finn comes to the ring presumably to help Damien Priest. Damien Priest. But but when Priest did the South of Heaven, he put Gunther's foot on the ropes. And Damien sees the replay on the big scoreboard. Yeah. And then he goes to grab Damien or uh, Finn Balor. And he puts him in a sleeper and that's how Priest loses the title. <laughs> so sad. So sad. That Judgment Day is falling apart. Yes. The Judgment Day went from, was it five or six people? Five. Five people to two people. Well, it started with Edge and Finn. Yeah. Then well, it, who was it right now? Who I mean, who was it before SummerSlam? It was JD McDonough. Carlito was there. Carlito, right. Uh, Dom, Dominic. Rhea. Damien Priest. Damien Priest and Finn Balor. And so Finn six. It went from six people to two people. Can you say those, those two people are still Judgment Day? You gotta wait till Raw. But we so we are and, and that's I guess because the majority is on one side, do you say the majority is Judgment Day? Or do you say the minority is Judgment Day? Uh, majority. So then Finn Bal as Rhea Ripley and Damien Priest kinda got kicked out of their own group, huh? Damien and, and Rhea. Rhea Ripley. Yeah, they got kicked out of their own group. Because they were the founding members and with that, Edge. So that's why I'm But asking. then they kicked Edge out. So, again, that's where I come down to this. How can you kick the founding members out? Because they can they can, they can now it's say... It's kind of like a business, though. I mean, you, you start a business and you have to have a, a board of directors. They can vote you out. You know, <laughs> putting my, my booker hat on. You know what I see happening? Sure. Because now you're setting clear divides from baby faces versus heels. Yeah, and they're doing a really good job. They're doing a very good job. And that's what I've noticed because there were some people that were on the edge. Are they or are they not, right? You have the anti heels like CM Punk or still kind of, but they're still a little bit on one side more than the other, right? Yeah. But they're setting clear divides on who the heels are oh, and yeah. who the, the baby faces are. So at this point, Rhea becomes the baby face. 
Damien Damien becomes a baby, baby face, face, and everybody in the Judgment Day becomes a heel. Yes. All this to say, you're having the same thing happen with the Bloodline. Now, we're about to get to that, right? Uh, I mean, the I, Bloodline's on a bigger scale. Yes, but all to say, right? Little by little, they're setting clear divides. And we're... we're as long-term storytelling in my book. Of course. And all I see is Marvel's Endgame. And I've, I said it before and I'll say it again. It's we're, better. I think it's better. Oh, we'll call it Civil War. <laughs> Maybe Civil War is more likely. I think it's going to come down to... And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. L l l let's move on because I said what I have to say. So, Jelly Roll, one hand choke slams. Uh, Jelly Roll kids involved? Yes. I don't remember seeing that. Who, who did he see choke slam? So, <laughs> Miss was the host. How did I? I, I was about to say he's the from Miss. Cleveland. He's from oh, Cleveland. It only makes sense. So, he's the host. He comes out with our truth. Uh, A Town Down comes out. Mm -hmm. Jelly Roll gets in the ring. He has a chair. So, they start beating up uh, A Town Down. And he hits both of them with a chair. Belly roll hits our truth. Jelly and the miss. roll. No, hits uh, the miss. No. Who? A town down. Oh, okay. So, what is his name? Shit. Grayson Waller and uh, Austin Theory. So he hits uh, him with a chair, <laughs> and one hand choke slams like lift that motherfucker straight up off the ground. He's a big guy. He is a big guy. He's a big guy. Which leads to the undistributed championship. Bloodline rolls like we talked about right. earlier. Started one on one. It was almost like a replay of WrestleMania. Really? Because Solo dominated some of the match. Good for him. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think he's the strongest one of Bloodline 2. I don't see him as being a legitimate champion. I told right you, now. Jake from Fa 2. You did say that. Has, is over. Shadowing him, you think it's happening purposefully or an accident? Uh, I think it's an accident that happened, and they got to work around it. Because that's because the same thing that happened with the shield, right? Seth overpowered. Ex yeah, that's. It was accident, right? So the match goes back and forth. Uh, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga appeared. Solo almost won. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Owens comes out to even. I mean, they're still at odd. They don't. They're not even yet. And then Randy Orton comes out. Then Jacob Fatu appears, breaks the pin up for Cody to win. Cody, Cody and Solo were laid out. Roman Reigns returns. And I said that Roman Reigns was going to. You turn. did say that before we go on. I saw that. A, go ahead. A frog splash from the top turnbuckle to Cody Rhodes. Yes. Was this a SummerSlam or was this Raw? This was SummerSlam. Jacob Fatu jumps on Cody Rhodes. Mm -hmm. I thought he legitimately got in injured. And that's where my question was going to be. Is he injured? I he thought injured? he got legitimately injured. He sold it. But here's the thing. I've, I've, I've heard some things okay. where they're trying to keep him from having a confrontation with Roman. So I think, I don't know. I don't know what to believe right now until Friday. Gotcha. So it, it could still be... I thought he might have broken his ankle initially. I, I didn't think that. I, I thought he, like... Because it looked like he hit his chin. Because he was in a walking boot. Oh. It was a picture taken with fans. Ah. Uh, I think they're just selling this injury to keep him... Right, good. Uh, whatever you need to do to keep kayfabe. Yeah. So, Roman enters... Superman punches and spears solo and Cody retains. But they did point at each other like I was gonna there's ask gonna be a that. third match. Hey, good. And I think Cody would have to be healed for that. I would want to I I know not would I want to see a Cody heel. I he's a very good heel. Yeah. And I I, I, I think I he saw. deserves to be healed so he can retain the championship longer. Yeah, and you got to reinvent yourself to be completely agree. Roman just did it. He's a baby face now. Yeah, he's got. I think he's got new music too. I thought so too. It's a different variation of what he had. Okay, so it, it's a little bit similar, but a little bit different. Yes. Okay, so now we're in SmackDown. Raw. Oh, Raw. Sorry. Okay. Baltimore, Maryland. 
That's a lot to digest. Monday Night Raw, 10,000 people. And this is kind of like where they summarize everything that kind of just happened and and put a new bow onto what's next, right? Yep. So Ludwig Kaiser opens up Raw to mm-hmm. introduce Gunther, the new world champion. Okay. He says, there's nobody that can match me. There's nobody that can beat me, pretty much. As every he's every bragging. single uh, championship you should. Gunther's the heel. Yes. Gunther's the heel. Okay. Enter Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Randy Orton is on SmackDown, right? I, I thought yes, so. He's on SmackDown. At King of the Ring, they fought for the final, for the crown. Mm. Randy's shoulder wasn't on the mat. What do you mean wasn't on the mat? The three count. His shoulder wasn't on the mat. For the three count. But the referee's decision was final. Yeah. That's where this match comes in. At Talk Bash, about long-term At the Bash, Bash in Berlin, it is Gunther, Randy Orton, for the World Heavyweight Championship, August 31st. Wow. Berlin, Germany. I don't know what to say about that. Gunther calls himself legend, living legend. Oregon, Orton made a career out of killing legends. Orton compares themselves to the Flair Steamboat of this generation, which I don't believe that. Yeah, I, w- I don't see it like that. But I haven't seen enough of Gunther to be able to actually comment too much on his wrestling style. Hey, he can wrestle. I- I'll have to watch more. He choked can... out Finn Balor, and then he did the same to Damian Priest. Is that like his move? No, he okay. doesn't usually choke people out. Because I was going to ask, like, the, 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 was a master class you should it's do a new the, thing. the, okay. It's a new thing. Goes right into Seamus versus Ludwig Kaiser. Mm-hmm. Pete Dunn tries to get involved and Seamus thwarts it. Seamus chopped the fuck out of fucking Kaiser and Seamus beats him. Okay. They're leading to a Pete Dunn versus Seamus eventually. Pete Dunn. Or Butch, they used to call him Butch. I'm gonna have to look more into this this other Pete character Dunn, that I haven't heard about. Seamus, and there was another one. Can't remember his name. They used to be the Brawling Brutes, and that kind of where at. What? Uh, Ridge Holland. Okay. And then Priest calls out Ballard. Mm, how was that? <laughs> Priest doesn't show, or uh, Ballard no, doesn't, doesn't show up. He appears via. Titan Tron. Oh, I say very good heel should. And announces that Priest or JD McDonough wants to get his hands on, on, uh, Priest. on Priest because he doesn't like him. The New Judgment Day is revealed. Is it called the New Judgment Day or is it just called? Uh, I think it's New Judgment Day. I don't know yet. Why Why do you think it's a New Judgment? Has there been just yeah, a New Judgment? There's pictures. New Judgment Day is announced. JD McDonough, Dom, Liv, Carlito, and Finn. So Carlito's actually in this thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, a really crappy match comes up next. Lara Valkyria versus Shayna Baszler. It's a DQ because Zoe Stark and Sonya Deville attack Valkyria. And then Damage Control is now a babyface all of a sudden. I don't know how that happened. We don't know why. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of questionable things right there. Okay. Damage Control is a babyface. They weren't at WrestleMania. So it just... They just happened. Gotcha. Very quick turn. Good for them. CM Punk continues. What happened to CM Punk? CM Punk calls out Drew McIntyre and wants to fight him. Because he was like, you were going to bury me 10 feet under... I'm only 6 feet. (laughs) Seth comes out, was about to fight Punk. Drew interrupts. Mm. He was like... It gives Punk props for being... Hey, well, but she didn't win the match and this and that and the other thing. And they were going to, you know, he taunts them with the bracelet. So Punk leaves. Punk leaves to go chase off Drew McIntyre. Ah. Punk leaves, chases Drew McIntyre. Bron- Big Bronson Reed. Big motherfucker from Australia. That's his name? Bronson Reed? Bronson Reed. He's Australian. They were uh, supposed to have a world title match back in February at Elimination Chamber when it was in Australia. They being Seth Bronson Rollins Reed. and uh, Bronson Reed. Oh, okay. It would have been a world championship match in Bronson Reed's home country. Makes sense. 
Well, they didn't happen because Seth got injured and they canceled it. Gotcha. Long-term storytelling. Mm -hmm. He told Adam Pierce, general manager of Raw, that I'm going to make a mark. And he just did that. Mm -hmm. Do what he do. He beat the hell up. 300 pounds just crashing onto the ribs of Seth Rollins like eight times. Wow. So so he went out of the ring, beat up Seth Rollins. Security comes out, like literally comes out and is trying to hold him back. But he keeps coming in. And oh. like Seth is already on the ground dying. That reminds me of Brock Lesnar, John Cena stuff. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. So that was that match was supposed to happen for the world title in February when Seth was still champion before WrestleMania. Okay, so now they're, I'm guessing they're going to build up the storyline. That the match body. is going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be Bash at Berlin. It might be uh, Unforgiven or Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. I mean, One of those. Yeah. This next match is okay. New Day versus AOP. Okay. Uh, Razor and Akar versus... Uh, Sounds like characters from Game of Thrones. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. The New Testament has been trying to get Kofi to leave Xavier Woods. Mm. Or the other way around. And they pretty much... Odyssey Jones, big motherfucker that was drafted like 400 days ago. It's been like forever. Yeah. Like, they had no direction from him. He got drafted around and we haven't seen him since. But we saw him last night. And, and I think they might be trying to replace Big E with Odyssey Jones. In the New Day? In the New Day. I don't want to see it. Not my mm. particular thing. There was a lot of chemistry that they had with, with uh, Big E. Big E's never going to be able to wrestle again. Oh, it's for a fact? Or... He's saying that he's putting his health over wrestling. Okay, good enough. And he got he was paralyzed there for a minute. I didn't know he was paralyzed. Because he got dropped on his neck. I knew that. I didn't know how bad it was. Like, they told him... I mean, he didn't know if he was going to have to retire, but it sounds like he's not coming back because he's doing a lot of the commentating for the pre-shows. Hey. A-Town up down gets revenge on Miz and R-Truth. They went a really crappy match. Mm. I give it a, like a D plus. Yeah. Brown Breaker sends a warning to the locker room. He's like, hey, I got the title, but okay. I'm not the hunted. I'm the hunter. Oh, so not not an open challenge. <laughs> He's calling the shots. Yes. Oh my gosh. They are booking him like a Brock Lesnar. Who so who's he calling out? Who do you, did he call anybody out? No, he no, just no said, call out. I'm I'll be calling out somebody soon. He called out the whole locker room. Hey, like, I'm everybody hunting, at once, come and get it. I'm hunting you. You're not hunting me, pretty much. Wow. Um, is, he has an intercontinental right now. He just wanted something. And this is what I mean by the champion makes the belt, not the belt makes the champion. He's, he's going to make that title more Good prestigious. Not that Gunther didn't do it with 666 days as Intercontinental Champion. I'm just going into it right now. <laughs> this is all I hear about it. I haven't heard much from Gunther, but I've, I've, I have, well, I've, I haven't heard much from Go back and watch last year's WrestleMania match between Gunther, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus. Okay. I'll make sure to do that. Uh... Priest fights JD due to New Judgment Day interference. He wins by DQ. And JD. then, no, Damien wins by DQ. Oh, by the, gotcha. They beat Priest down, then Priest fights back. Liv is stomp in the ring with Dom stomping, and then Rhea comes out. And then. I remember seeing. Rhea that. was going to attack Liv, but Dom saves her. And then they, Rhea and JD beat up, or Rhea and Damien beat up Priest. Rhea and Damien beat up JD. JD. Yeah, JD. Like she did the like the headbutt, and then he fucking chokes him him to hell. <laughs> uh, so now now they're going after. Them. Yeah, they said Rhea Ripley and Damien Priest are forming their own faction of two. Yeah, and they're coming for heads. Yeah, I like that. They're coming for everything. Everything. They're gonna pillage the village. Yes. <laughs> you, don't, the village. you don't want them <laughs> I, I, against you. Uh, Sonya Deville attacks Dakota Kai before their match. Io Sky replaces, beats Sonya Deville. And then we got a name for this new stable of being... that faced the White Six last night. Who? Oh, with the... Chad Gable and the Creed yeah. Brothers? Yeah, what's their name? American Maid. 
is what they're calling themselves. You, you could have thought of so many things. It's a Kurt Angle thing. About. Oh, is it really? I really think it has something to do with Kurt Angle. You think Kurt Angle com, comes, comes in? Nah, maybe as a manager. I can and see that. that, that that's what I was going with. I, I, it feels right. Uh, it was a good match for Wyatt Six, even though... Who, who wrestled from the Wyatts? So it was Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, and uh, Dexter Loomis versus the Creed Brothers and Chad Gable. Chad Gable. We Chad. haven't seen anything from Uncle Howdy yet, have we? No, he hasn't wrestled yet. Not, not anything one on one. in first. First match ever for the Wyatt Six. And we haven't seen who the sixth person is. We think no. it's going to be... I think it's going to be Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss. 11 years to the day in Baltimore, Maryland from when the Wyatt family debuted. Really? Long-term storytelling. What happened? Wyatt Six wins, even though... I mean, they made it hard. The American made made it hard because they're, they're all three technical wrestlers. Yeah. Because, you know, Gable's an Olympic wrestler. It was a good match overall. Uh, they won. It was a good Raw overall, minus the Sonya Deville thing and the the New Day thing. What would you rate Raw altogether? I'd say an A minus. A minus, okay. You're getting better. To preview SmackDown really quick, mm-hmm. Roman won't be on SmackDown. Oh, he will be. We'll be on SmackDown Friday. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. AJ Styles is supposed to appear. Last time he was seen, he wasn't a sum. Oh, he wasn't a SummerSlam, right? No. What AJ could- Styles lost the I Quit match to Cody Rhodes at Backlash. Ah. Uh, uh, we're gonna find out the condition of Jacob Fatu. Did he break his ankle? Did he not? Uh, who challenges LA Knight first? And who's next for Cody Rhodes? I mean, what is next? And we're. What is? So let's try to answer those questions. You probably have a better insight than I do. Who, I don't know what they're doing with AJ Styles. What I do know is... You don't think he fights Cody Rhodes? No. He's already lost him twice. Oh, yeah. You can't fight him again. No. I don't have any quest- I don't have any answers for that one. For Cody Rhodes or AJ Styles? Or both? Both. I think AJ's coming to the end of his career. Uh, I think Roman is going to have something to say like he wants a rematch because he never got his rematch. And he deserves one. But in that line of thinking, I think Rock comes out and says, hey, I'm the one controlling the new bloodline. And they're gonna, it's going to lead to war games in November in Vancouver, Canada. That's exciting. That's, that's why I want to go to Canada. Like, shit. <laughs> Uh, will there be a rem- rematch for Logan Paul? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of opening matches. Like, it opens up a little bit of what they can do with the U.S. title and who L.A. Knight can face. Santos Escobar, good wrestler. So this is going to start building up some of their... their up and comers. Of, yeah, and their mid-carders, kind of low mid-cards. Because and- eventually, Seth Rollins is going to go away. Roman's going to go away. When you say go away, you mean... Retire. That's not going to happen anytime soon, though. They're 45. They're both 45? A lot of them are in their 40s. LA Knight's 45. How old is Randy Orton? Because he's, he's, he's an OG. He's 50-something. 50, 50 Who else is there from Randy Orton's age? He's just him, right? Uh, yeah, it's just him. Because yeah. John Cena's... Ret- he's on and then after retirement. that, it's a class of Sheamus. Sheamus is old, too. Yeah. I mean, Braun Breaker's 27. 28. I mean, we're, we're going into like a. You have to find your. your yeah, new, they're building up their new talents and new, new stars and new faces of companies. I like that. A uh, woman I like is Lyra Valkyria. She can wrestle. Lyra Valkyria, I haven't heard of her. She just came over from the next team. Okay. She's on Raw. Uh, another one. I want to see what they do with Carmelo Hayes. He's been having some good matches. I can see Carmelo Hayes versus LA Knight for the title. For the okay. United States Championship. That'd be a good match. What kind of wrestlers do you see? He's a high flyer. Ah, oh, that's exciting. Any, anytime you have a high flyer, it's exciting. It's always been exciting. I mean, WCW made the uh-huh, cruiserweights. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people want to bash ECW fans will say, oh, ECW. I was like, y'all, 
Eric Bischoff was like, oh, you only had two wrestlers. We had a whole division. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it for the Suicide... Suicide Society. <laughs> Suplex, the Suplex Society. Society. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And let us know Tell who your favorite wrestler is. What your favorite moment of the weekend was. Oh, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to do that. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Peace.